Hello guys, today I want to demonstrate you one live wire component called invoice form invoice editor. And it's mostly a form of parent and child elements that is used for invoice, but generally could be used for any parent and child relationships. And this is a component from my livewirekit.com with 34 components, and this is one of them. But on livewirekit, I don't only create new components from time to time, but also listen to your feedback and improve the existing ones. So the invoice is one of them. So if we go to search for invoice editor, this is how it looks. And this is how it looks in the browser. Let me zoom it in a bit. So a form to add some main data for the main model, like customer name, email, and taxes. So let's use fake fill or Chrome extension to fill in something. And then you can add products, multiple products. So add product, then you choose product from the list, choose the quantity. And when you click save, that number is recalculated. And then you can do various manipulations like adding other product, adding other quantity, deleting some product, everything is recalculated. And then when you click save the invoice, the data is actually saved in the database. So what we changed in the current version is we added editing of the form. And generally I noticed that with Livewire, I get more and more questions about editing. So for example, component for related dropdowns or something, and there's a create form. But for editing form, it's kind of tricky to save all the old values to be visible correctly. So in this case, what we actually have is a table, which is not live wire. So the list of invoices. And when you click edit, you have a URL of invoices slash ID slash edit, which is also not a live wire. And then inside of that blade, we load the live wire component of invoice form with invoice as a parameter. Let's take a look how it all works in the code. So in the blade, in Laravel blade, we load live wire like this. This is edit blade of the invoice. And if we take a look at create blade, the only difference is there is no invoice passed. The parameter of design template is related to my live wire kit because all the components are in Bootstrap and Tailwind in two options. So you can ignore that. You don't actually need it. The main thing is whether you pass the invoice or not. So in other words, in the browser, this is layout from Laravel. And from here, we have live wire component and that live wire component looks like this so with the invoice form we work with such data we work with the invoice object which comes from the database or is null by default we work with invoice products which is an array and i will show you why and then we just load all the possible products for the drop down from the database in the mount method which is kind of a constructor of live wire component we get the invoice. If it's not filled, then it will be null, and that is fine. Then we get all products from the database once, so we don't make a database query each time that we change something in the dropdown. And then if we have invoice, we get invoice products, which has many relationship, and fill in the array of invoice products. Each of the product in that array, which is in Livewire component, not in the database yet, remember, has such values, product ID, quantity, then is saved or not, product name and price. Where is it actually used? So product name and price is loaded here and quantity here. So these are visual parameters. Is saved means that if you, for example, add a new product and choose something, this is not saved yet until you click save here. So in this situation, if you want to add another product, it will show you an error that this line must be saved. This is just to avoid some inconsistencies and errors. So you would be forced to finish editing one line before getting to another. Then what happens with the render? So viewing the blade, we calculate the total from the current array, not from the database, because the current array is changing all the time until we save that in the database. And then we load our form with total, which is actually subtotal. Probably this variable should be renamed to subtotal. And then total adds the taxes, which is in this invoice taxes, visually this field taxes. So this is subtotal, this is total, and they are both calculated from the Livewire component here. Then in the actual form, we have the table of the products and each field is wire modeled to invoice products array index which is array element and then property of that array so product id in our case so this is for selecting the product and the same with invoice products index quantity and if you want to edit the product wire click prevent edit product and save product and then remove product all of those methods come to the component itself to have edit product we validate if there's no other product in progress of editing currently and we just make is saved as false. And then in the live wire component, we check that is saved 
here and in a few more places. So this is what happens when you click edit the product and then when you finish editing you want to save that. We'll get the price of the product and name of the product from the database you would think but no it's actually from the collection. This all products is mounted in the very beginning remember this so we don't make a query to the database we work with the collection for performance improvements so all save product does is saving the is saved to true and then saving name and price for viewing in the table remove product removes it just from the array and we need to also reshuffle array values to avoid inconsistency in the keys and then what i forgot is add a product so when you click on top of the form or at the bottom of the form it's add product yep this wire click prevent add product then again we validate if there's nothing in progress of editing and then we just add another value to the array of invoice products and when we're ready to save the full invoice here's the save invoice this validate validates the rules of it's at the bottom invoice customer email name and taxes and if it's all valid then we save the invoice first and then we get through that array of invoice products, transform it into a new array of products and sync it with many to many relationships. And then we redirect back to the Laravel route, which is outside of Livewire. So actually Livewire is just a form for dynamic behavior to manipulate the data, but after it's saved, it goes back to the main Laravel application. And this is, in my opinion, probably the best case of using Livewire for dynamic forms, for dynamic elements, dynamic blocks on your page, because I've been chatting about Laravel full page components pretty recently on my channel in the comments. It is possible to use Livewire instead of Laravel controllers, but I'm not a big fan of that. I'm a bigger fan of creating smaller components, smaller things where you actually need the dynamic behavior. And for that, I've created that Livewire kit with a lot of examples of smaller components like star rating, for example, like table, for example, like select two, what else, a quiz, Again, the table with load more, pagination, commenting. So some smaller element on the page. And if you want those components, they are all at livewirekit.com. You can check that out. And I like working with Livewire a lot. So in 2022, I probably will release a separate, some kind of course on advanced Livewire or more components here or both and videos. So if you have any ideas around Livewire or questions, shoot in the comments below and see you guys in other videos.